Michael Myers. You can shoot him six times, you can even make six terrible sequels, but Michael Myers will never die. Halloween is back. Welcome back to Things You Missed. Today we're taking a look at the trailer for Halloween. I'm gonna be breaking it down shot by shot for you and pulling out all those juicy things you missed. Now when you watch the trailer, you'll notice something very early on. Check out this clip. We're here to investigate a patient that killed three innocent teenagers on Halloween in 1978. Anyone who's seen the movies knows that he's killed a bit more than three people. I mean, probably only our boy Deadmeat knows the actual number, but what, what's going on here? What's the deal with that? Well, it was previously believed that this movie takes place in a fourth, or depending on your view, possibly fifth universe, and that it would branch off from the main timeline after Halloween 2. However, this trailer claims that after being shot by Dr. Loomis in the original movie, Michael was captured and taken into captivity, where he spent the last 40 years. That means this movie takes place in a timeline where none of these movies happened. So this is essentially a fresh slate for the franchise. That's not to say it doesn't have some homages to other films hidden in the trailer though, so make sure you watch this whole video to see all of those. Unfortunately for us, that new timeline means that we may have to sit through yet another scene of the characters finding out that Michael Myers is invincible, as we have painstakingly had to do in pretty much every movie. That's essentially confirmed when we see the older Laurie Strode doing target practice in her backyard and trying to stab him with a knife. Come on Laurie, you know better than this. Notice the guy at the beginning says that Michael killed three innocent teenagers. I mean, are there really such thing as innocent teenagers though? But he makes no mention of Michael killing his sister at the age of six, which is what happens in the first scene of the original 1978 Halloween. In this movie, Laurie has a granddaughter and she has a line that confirms that Michael's not even related to her. No. It was not her brother. That's something that people made up. So that might lead some people to believe that the opening scene didn't happen in this timeline. But I think they've just neglected to mention the murder of Michael's older sister Judith because we do see a sketch of Dr. Loomis in the police report and it's mentioned that Michael was shot by his own psychiatrist. I can't imagine why he'd have a psychiatrist without those events taking place in 1963 first. It's also really the only explanation as to why these kids in 2018, 40 years after the fact, know about a murderer who only killed three people all those years ago and to the point that he's a household name. And one more thing on the whole idea of Laurie and Michael not actually being siblings, my theory is that they're taking the Halloween 3 approach to where this takes place in a different universe entirely, but the other movies still exist as fictional movies in this universe. So in this universe, somebody made a based on a true story movie or book about the killer, Michael Myers, and then the sequel started to come out and then they were not so based on a true story. And that's where the idea of Laurie and Michael being siblings may have originated. Of course, it's also possible that they are really related and Laurie just doesn't know it much like in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Here we get to see the police reports from that Halloween night all those years ago, and they do contain some nuggets I thought you might be interested in. This is Lori's injury report, detailing the slash across her right neck and shoulder and bruising and contusions around the neck. This is only on screen for less than one tenth of a second, but there's a photograph of someone's hand and this almost looks like a reflection of the mask, but I might just be reading too much into it. Here we've got a large knife, evidence from the upstairs bedroom, which of course was labeled with the date 103178. Then again, only one tenth of a second, they show off evidence photos of the mask. This photo was probably taken after the fact because it looks like nobody's wearing the mask and the background here is some kind of tiled area, whereas at the end of Halloween, Michael ends up on the grass outside the house. This is most likely a photo of Tommy Doyle, the boy that Lori was babysitting on that fateful night. But behind that, we get a little glimpse of the police report text. The only interesting thing that I pulled from that is the mention of Deputy Miller, who as far as I know isn't an existing character in the franchise, so this may be someone new who is retconned into the story. Other than that, it just seems to be a recount of the events of the OG Halloween. Another question, who are these people investigating Michael Myers and why now? Why are they trying to get a rise out of him by showing him the mask? Okay, I guess that's more than one question, but I think this guy could be a disciple of Dr. Loomis, or in any event, the successor to Dr. Loomis who goes into town and warns people about how dangerous Michael is, just as Loomis did in the films that he was in. Unlike his predecessor, however, he doesn't seem to have given up on his patient just yet. Laurie asks him if he believes in the boogeyman, he says no, suggesting he might not see Michael as a monster like Laurie does. The woman that he's working with is documenting everything using the audio recorder, and her name tag also gives us a couple of clues. First, we see the name of the facility, Smith's Grove State Hospital. The original facility that Michael broke out of was called Smith's Grove Sanitarium, so it's likely the same place that just got a name change some point along the line. You have to believe that if he can break out once, he can do it again. This chick's name is Dana Haynes. 
There is a security guard named Haynes at a different hospital known as Grace Anderson Sanitarium in Halloween Resurrection, but I doubt that's even a reference seeing as how hated that movie is. It's just my job to point it out to you though. Okay, wait, hold up, hold up, okay. This kid's a ninja, this kid's a skeleton. What is this kid supposed to be, Busta Rhymes? But on a more serious note, this scene is a major throwback to the original Halloween where Lori walks home from school with her two friends, but this time it's Lori's granddaughter. They just put this boba tea in the shot so you can tell that this is the 2018 one. Lori is absolutely crazy in this movie. She's basically spent the last 40 years preparing for Michael. And if you read between the lines, you can see everyone's subtle condescending behavior towards her. Even her own family treats her like a nutcase. The bus crashed. Mom, what bus crashed? Additionally, the neighborhood kids seem to have no respect for her authority. She's basically turned her house into a fortress with cameras, sirens, even a secret bunker. It looks like they're setting up a classic old lady who cried wolf scenario. Lori's been freaking out over the last 40 years about the return of Michael Myers. No, not that return of Michael Myers. And basically, when he does really come back, nobody's gonna take her seriously. This bathroom scene may be a reference to the opening scene of H2O, where a woman is attacked by Michael in a rest stop bathroom. In this case, it looks like it's a gas station bathroom, and it looks like a mechanic also faces the wrath of Michael Myers. So it looks like a lot of the deaths in this movie will be callbacks to the other moments in the franchise, despite them not being on this timeline. And back to the bathroom stall for one moment. This drawing on the stall really stands out. To me, it looks like a dog wearing sunglasses looking to the left, but I couldn't help but notice if you're a race part of it, you've got the Cult of Thorn symbol from Halloween 4, 5, and 6. Now, do I think that this cult will be making an appearance in this movie? No, absolutely not. It would just be a fun little Easter egg for the fans of those movies. Let me know your interpretation of the bathroom stall drawing in the comments, though. I already found my most character. This lady wearing a Christmas sweater on Halloween. A lot of people were confused about this scene where Lori shoots because she thinks she sees Michael in the window of this house. Some were comparing it to H2O where Lori has constant hallucinations of Michael, but if you slow it down, it looks like it's actually just a mirror that she sees in through. One thing that I found creepy is that there's actually somebody in the other room over here watching this all go down and the person's head immediately snaps toward the room that Michael's in. Judging by the lighting, I'd say that the room with the blue light is this room, where there's yet another reference, this time to the ghost scene from the first Halloween, where Michael wears the ghost sheet over his head to try to trick Lori's friend Linda into thinking it was her boyfriend, Bob, in order to get her guard down. I do think that Lori's granddaughter is gonna be the main protagonist of this movie, and it looks like one of her friends is a babysitter. So don't be surprised if what goes down in this movie is very similar to the events of 40 years ago. If you enjoyed any of these things you missed, feel free to drop a like on this video. Let me know in the comments who you think is crazier, this Lori or the Lori from Rob Zombie's Halloween films. Anyway, if you're new here, I'm CZ. I write and narrate my own horror stories as well. I just came out with one called Creepy Clown School Lockdown 2. Don't worry, you don't need to see the first one. Just go ahead and give it a listen. Okay, last announcement, if you're going to VidCon, come to my fan meetup on Thursday the 21st at 5.30 p.m. in room 211. We're gonna be raffling off some merch and there's gonna be some other cool creators there as well. Okay, with that all out of the way, I think we're gonna be talking a lot about this Halloween movie, so make sure you're subscribed to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring that death bell for notifications and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.